So this first thing that I have on here is review, like the quiz that you just took. How you find a derivative at any point x, f prime of x. So on that quiz that I passed back to you, how did you find a derivative? What was the pattern here, the, the formula, so to speak? Uh, well, what comes before all that? Limit. Limit, there we go. H goes to zero. Again, you want that distance to be nothing. That's what makes it instantaneous, all right? And then what you guys were saying, f of x plus h, you plug in x plus h minus f of x over h. But what you have to remember is derivative means slope. Everything boils down to slope, okay? Now, what we did on your quiz is you found this f prime of x, and then I asked you a couple of follow-up questions. Hey, um, what is the instantaneous rate of change at two? And you plugged in two or whatever it was. Remember, I threw a few of those at the end, just plugged it in. What if you wanted to make it a one-step process instead of a two-step process? Instead of finding the derivative and then having to plug in that number, you could just jump straight to the answer. So to get your derivative at a specific point, which we're gonna call c, it looks weird when you call it C. When we do an actual problem, that'll be a value, like one or something. Do you get what I'm saying? When it's a number, it'll make a little bit more sense. But I have to give you the formula first. You want to get it at a specific point. It's limit as x goes to C. F of x, so the function, minus F of C. So you plug in that number and see what you get. Over x minus C. What I was saying is, remember how it's all slope, how it all boils down to slope? Because I don't want you to view this as like memorizing something totally brand new. Think back to algebra one. I'm just going to write this off to the side so I don't put it on my notes here. What's your slope formula? Do you remember slope formula from algebra one? Good. Do you see how if I cover up, do you see how if I cover up limit? Do you see how it's that? Algebra? Calculus, algebra, calculus. You see how just throwing a limit in front of it makes it calculus? So I don't want you to view this as memorizing a totally brand new formula. It's something that you've been doing for a long time. Do you see? Okay, so I don't want you to feel overwhelmed with that. It's something that you've done before. So this says find f prime of two for this function. So instead of finding the derivative and then separately having to plug in two, we're gonna jump straight to the answer. So it's gonna be limit x goes to two. And then we're just gonna follow along with this formula. So it's the function, so just copy that over, three x squared plus x minus whatever you get when you plug in two. All right, so you have to do some math there. So if you plug in two for these x's to this function, let's see, what would that give you? Two squared, four times three is 12, 14 over, and then this says x minus c, it would be x minus 2. As a heads up, this will always be indeterminate, which means 0 over 0. Do you remember that back from unit 1? means you have to do algebra until you get something to cancel out. So we're going to keep our limit notation here. And what do we need to do with this numerator? Okay, perfect. Okay, so welcome back to algebra 2. Spoiler alert, though, one of the factors is going to be x minus 2. Do you know what I mean? Like the problem helps you a little bit. One of the factors is going to have to be X minus two because it's going to have to cancel. So how would you split up the three X squared? Three X and X. 14 is going to have to be seven and two. Like I said, one of these is going to have to be X minus two. Um, and then what's the symbol on the other plus? Because you want a positive one X in the middle. Good job. Perfect. So these cancel. And then you're just going to plug in two. All right, so our final answer, f prime of two equals, what do you get when you plug in two to what's left there? 13, perfect. So again, instead of finding the derivative and then having to plug in two, you just jump straight to the answer. Here is a piecewise function. Where is the cut point for our domain? Three, okay. Is the function continuous at three? That's just, do they link up at three? Do the two pieces meet up at three? If you were with me in pre-calc, do you remember the flip book that we made for piecewise functions? Or if you were in the other class, did you make that little flip book? 
I always love that little filter. Anyway, that's where it links up. All you have to do to check if you're continuous um, is, oh, actually, let's review the definition of continuity. I wasn't here when you went over it. You just watched a video. There's three parts to it. What do you have to have for continuity? There has to be what? A point? A limit? Awesome. Okay, so let's first find a point, f of three. That makes me so happy. Because a point, a limit, they agree. That's awesome. All right, which piece of the function are we going to plug three into? Yeah, why the second one? Has the equal to. All right, if you plug in three there, you're going to get seven. All right, and then we're going to do limit x approaches three from the left. Leave a little space, and we're going to do limit x approaches three from the right. The reason that we have to do from the left and from the right is because it's piecewise. That's why we have to do that. If it wasn't piecewise, we could just do the overall limit, but it, it got broken potentially at three. So which piece of the function do we use for the left? Yeah, the x squared minus two. And from the right, you would use the two x plus one. That's a lot of writing and a lot of notation, but the only math you're going to do is plug in three. All right. The, on the AP exam, they just like to see all this notation, the limit from the left and the limit from the right. But you're just going to plug in three. If you plug in three to this one, what do you get? Yeah, nine minus two is seven. And if you plug in three to this one, seven. So what's the answer to the whole question? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Continuous. What that means is the two pieces link up. but is the function differentiable? And what that word means is able to get a derivative, differentiable. You could do a derivative at that point. So that means we're gonna need to do the derivative from the left and the derivative from the right. So we're gonna use this new formula that I gave you, okay? Now I can't have that and this on the screen at the same time, because it's not big enough. So you have it written down. We're gonna do limit x goes to three from the left, which piece of the function do we use for the from the left part? Yeah, the x squared minus two. So it's the function, it's the function minus whatever you get when you plug in three. We already did that. It's seven and then over x minus three. Again, as a heads up, these will always be indeterminate. You are gonna have to do some algebra. Like it will come out to zero over zero, I promise. So I'd like for you to look through, what do you wanna try and do to that? Or where does your brain go? What are you gonna do next? Factor, good. Now this is actually x squared minus nine. Do you guys see that there? How would you split up x squared minus nine? Yep, good. Difference of squares, x plus three x minus three. The x minus threes cancel, and then you just plug in three. Six, perfect. Your derivative, which derivative means? Perfect, perfect, slope. Your slope from the left is six. Now we're gonna do from the right. So limit x goes to three from the right. Which piece of the function do we use? Yeah, the bottom one, two x plus one. That's the function minus whatever you get when you plug it in, which we did it, it's seven over X minus three. Good. You guys are fantastic. Awesome. Now you're gonna have to factor. Again, th these are never going to just work. Like you will have to do some algorithm. So in the numerator there, we actually have two X, 2x minus 6. How could you factor 2x minus 6? Okay. Yeah, factor out a 2. That would leave you with, oh my gosh, x minus 3. Which those cancel and you get 2. So your slope from the left is 6, but your slope from the right is 2. So yes or no, is the function differentiable at 3? No, they did not come out to the same thing. So here's a visual of what was going on there. What does this first piece of the function look like? It's squared, so what is it gonna look like? 
a U, a quadratic, a parabola. And then this piece is what? Linear, a line. Are we all together there? So it's going to look like this, a U shape and then a line. And they matched up like it was continuous. But do you see how there's that sharp edge there? And the little matching activity we just did, all the ones that had sharp edge, you can't get a derivative there. It's not differentiable. So it's continuous, but it's not differentiable. Cool? Right? Okay, sweet. So here are the rules. A function is differentiable if it is continuous. So no discontinuities. No discontinuities. So it has to be continuous in order to be differentiable. Let's make a few little pictures of all the discontinuities. How could you get a discontinuity? A hole? A jump? Perfect. You guys got them all. You can also have the hole where the point is somewhere else, but, you know, same, same thing. So those are all your discontinuities. Um, you can have no sharp edges. There's two ways you can have a sharp edge. Um, you've seen one of them a lot, which is like the absolute value graph. It's called a corner. The other one, which you probably haven't seen, looks like this. It's how I would draw a bird flying. It's called a cusp. Um, I don't usually use either of those words, corner or cusp. I just say sharp edge, and then it doesn't matter what it is. You're not wrong no matter what. You can't mix them up if you just say sharp edge. Okay. Usually everyone remembers those two. It's the third one people forget about. No vertical tangent lines. This one is a by definition kind of thing. What's the slope of a vertical line? Undefined. Like by definition, it's undefined. Just if the graph goes vertical there in the center, just the slope of a vertical line is undefined. So by definition, it is undefined. So those are the ways that you will end up with your function not being differentiable. So I'm going to write one thing at the top of the next uh, paper before we actually answer all of these. Do you know that thing where like all, how does it go? All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. You know that? Okay. So if a function is differentiable, and I'm going to abbreviate diff, that's an abbreviation they won't take on the AP exam. They'll take because, B slash C. They'll take between, B slash W, all those things. Diff, don't write differentiable on your AP exam. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, if a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. If your function is differentiable, then it's going to have to be continuous. But if a function is continuous, I would write that one out too, just to be sure. They'll take positive POS, negative NEG, like they'll take those kind of things, INC for increasing. These, I would write out the whole word. I'm abbreviating, but I would write it out for them. If a function is continuous, then it is not necessarily differentiable. It might be, but it might not be. The example we just did on the other side where you had the parabola that matched up to the line, it's continuous. They linked up, but you ended up with a sharp edge there, so it wasn't differentiable. Do you understand what I'm saying then? So, like, it's the squares and rectangles thing. So what we're going to do for each of these graphs is we're going to discuss or state whether it is or not uh, the continuity and differentiability of the following functions. So looking at this one, is this graph continuous? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So we're going to say continuous on negative infinity to positive infinity. Continuous all the time. Good, so we're gonna say not differentiable. Now, if you're saying yes, it's kind of like just yes. If you're saying no, you wanna say where, so at x equals whatever, and the reason, which is gonna involve limits from the left and right. 
Okay, so not differentiable at x equals what? Zero, all right? We're gonna do our limit as x approaches zero from the left and limit as x approaches zero from the right. And we're gonna use that new little formula that I gave you. But remember it's slope. Remember, it's, it's just slope, slope, slope. If you don't know what to do, slope. Remember, what did I put it on a little sticky note? Remember your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus that you've been doing this forever? All right. It's the function minus f of zero over what's going to go on the denominator. Good. And then just copy that again. What happened over here? Would you like to share? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we're we're doing this now. I'm watching. Okay. So if you look at your slope from the left, what do you know about the slope of this line? It's negative. It's negative. So less than zero. Or you could write, bless you, you could write is negative. If you don't like symbols, if you like words better, you could write is negative. And then what do you know about the slope from the right? Is positive. And that'll do. That's a good enough explanation. They can't equal each other if one of them's negative and one of them's positive. Okay. No. All right, let's look at this one. Do you think this graph is continuous? No. Okay. So we're going to say discontinuous. And again, if it's a no, you want to say at what location and then give a reason. So discontinuous at x equals 2. And the reason involves limits. Now, we don't have to use this, though, because we're just doing continuous, discontinuous. It's not differentiable. So it's a little bit easier. You're still going to have to do from the left and the right, but it's just the function. You don't have to do that whole slope thing. Because this is not a derivative. This is just the graph. So you can just put f of x. Do you get the difference? Continuous, you're just talking about the graph. Does it link up? Differentiable, you're now talking about slope. That's a derivative. So what do you know um, about this limit? Limit as we go to two from the left. Negative infinity, good, you'll pass unit one. And then from the right, positive infinity. Perfect. So you can't say um, limit does not exist anymore. You have to- They like to see from the left and from the right. Anytime you see something involving a limit on a free response question, they're going to want left and right because they want to see all that notation. They want to know that you can do all the notation and everything. Now, if the <laughs> I am the messenger, okay, I always get asked why I don't grade. Hey, well, you know so much about the exam. Why don't you do grading? Because I'm not evil. I just can't do it. Like, I don't, like, I would just want to mark them all right. No, the AP exam. Uh, I don't want to be a grader because it's. You get to do money? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to do it. All right. Now, if the graph is not continuous, then it's not going to be differentiable. So we're going to say not differentiable at x equals 2, and it would be the exact same reason. Exact same reason. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not going to write it again. Because if it's not continuous, then it's not different. So same reason. All right, how about number four? Continuous, what do you, uh, what do you think about continuity? Yeah. So continuous all the time. So you don't need an explanation for a yes. That's just yes. All right, what do you think about differentiability? No, okay, so we're going to say not differentiable at x equals negative three. Yes, that is called a cusp. But I would want you to use the word sharp edge if you had to write it, because then you don't have to worry about it. It's called. But we're going to do limit x goes to negative 3 from the left. Limit x goes to negative 3 from the right. And this has to be that little slope formula, like your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2. So try not to look back at question 2. It's going to be almost the exact same thing. How is it going to start? What do we put? f of x. f of... Negative three, good, over 
Why is it x plus 3 minus, minus negative. negative? Good job. And then just copy that again. It's the same thing twice. It is, if you feel like you're just writing the same thing over and over again, you are. But this is what they want on the AP exam. They like to see that you know your notation. So it's, it's all that nitty gritty notation that they want to see. All right, your slope from the left. This graph is decreasing. That means the slope is, now here, I'll write it out this way, is negative. Or you could write less than zero. This is just the other way you can put it. And then slope from the right is positive. So they can't equal each other if one is negative and one is positive. And then lastly, we have a parabola. So is it continuous? Yep, continuous all the time. And is it differentiable? Yes, you did not break any of these rules. You don't have any discontinuities. You don't have any sharp edges. You don't have any vertical tangent lines. So differentiable all the time as well. Now, the other way you see this show up on the AP exam, don't stop listening to me, is they will tell you a function is differentiable. And then they will ask you about continuity. And you will have to write, because f of x is differentiable, therefore it is continuous. It's usually worth a point to say that. That's how, another way that it shows up, is they'll put f of x is differentiable, and then you have to say that part. Because it's differentiable, it is also continuous. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the other way that shows up a lot.